It's it's a matter of you know adding another node. Yeah, you know these these uh, to be honest those those trust nodes you saw I added a few weeks ago just for this class to keep you excited. <laughs> yeah. So. But I, I like it, you know, um, you know, the outcome. And I, ta you know, I talked to myself, yeah, you should add more, actually, because it's looking good. Is it generating trust objects or individual framing elements? Individual framing elements. And I prefer to do this in Revit because it's, uh, I can, it's easier, you know, for me to handle that, you know, from the analytical model standpoint. Uh, and, uh, and also here, under, I was having this on my slide. Oh, Revit frame. Here, I can easily control, you know, joints of my physical objects when I generate uh, geometry in Revit. If I if I uh, wouldn't do that, uh, then the model would look really horrible because these auto joints. Um, um, I'm losing control. We, we lose control when we allow um, Revit to to do it automatically when we model, you know, physically. Right, and uh, modeling such trusses as uh, the framing elements, like I was saying, I have a full control over uh, uh, the geometry, and I'm not worried about my analytical model. I should mention that um, during the generation process of models in Revit, um, I should actually play this video for you. Uh, so let me do that. In the meantime, it will be running. So um, at the end, I'm generating this uh, to, to, to into the Revit environment. So any kind of geometry I, I, I generated from Dynamo to Revit was OK from the physical standpoint as well as the analytical one, because the way how dynamo geometry is connected is more or less, it's almost the same as we would do with the analytical model, right? So that's why the analytical model is totally, you know, connected. When I, uh, when I, when I defined my offsets for my purlins, I applied some extra, you know, parameters. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm activating Revit model, uh, Revit model, model nodes, and I, when I click the run button, yeah, take a look. This is the outcome. So, and I, if if I would switch to the analytical model, everything would be connected in the right way. So. Those perlins, they they are connected with my with my rafters, in the right way. So they are not above of them, right? The analytical one. The analytical one. Exactly. 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 Because many people currently struggle with modeling um, good models for analysis in Revit. Uh, some of them forget to take care of the analytical model when they model phys physical one. With Dynamo, actually, you do things at the same time. It's, you know, the analytical model then is, is taken into, um, into account. It, 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 it really hard to get, you know, analytical model broken when you use Dyna Dynamo. <laughs> Yeah.
Exactly. Yeah. Because that trust then uh, generated in Revit, not as a trust, right? Revit family trust, but uh, framing objects can be used later in advanced still. It can be used uh, for analysis. So we may, s yeah, take a look. We may, we may send this trust to RSA from Revit without generating this directly in RSA. We may have this intermediate step, send it to Revit, and then send it to RSA, right? But uh, having those trusses uh, as a Revit trusses in the Revit would be, for me, useless. So I wouldn't be able to leverage that for analysis in the way how I want. Yeah. Any, any more questions? If not, thank you very much.